Hi, this is Trisha from East Marsh Shakers, and uh, today is seed starting day. So I wanted to fill you in on the process that I do for seed starting. So today is March 15th. Um, it's about the time I started last year and I had good success with what I'm starting. Um, yeah, I'm gonna show you what I do. What I did last week though is I um, started some ranunculus corms. So right now I'll show you. I have them under here. So they're in the dark and germinating. So these are corms and uh, so some of them have sprouted which is great. I'm still waiting for more because I've got three containers of ranunculus here. This first one is not really doing too much. So apparently they like to be germinated in the dark, but they take almost two weeks or so to do. So I'm not too worried that they're, they're, um, they're not coming up or anything or not germinating. So, and, uh, and then what I've done is I've started, these are red cabbage, white cabbage, and broccoli. So they are really, really tiny seeds. So I'll see what germinates here. That's the first one. So this is the process that I do. I put in the seed starting um, soil and I wet it. And so it's moist, but it's not drippy uh, in there. So um, I am going to do the, the kale and yeah, let's see what else I put in there. I need to do kale, the tomatoes, the peppers, um, uh, eggplant, cucumbers. So I'll start them all today. But I start them all in big containers like this because I don't know how much is germinating. And then I will transplant them into larger containers later. So these are just, yeah. You know, your bakery containers that you get stuff. This is like from Costco for their croissants or whatever. I just cut off the lids and I use the bottoms. And so it's a great thing. I have other ones, you know, like this. Um, yeah, that you use, that you get from the grocery store or something like this. The chicken containers. So it's not expensive to be starting. You don't have to have all the special... Um, containers and so on to be doing this. So I start with these ones and see what germinates and then I um, and then I transplant it. So in the background you can probably hear our chickies. So they're right next to me so I'm in our laundry room. Oh, I don't like the sound of the chair scraping. But see how big they're getting? Look at they're on top of the heater had to move the water because they were jumping onto the water and then of course set, standing on it so then they poop in it. See, look at they can go on, fly. They're getting so much bigger. Look at how big their wings are. And this is what only a week and a half that we've had them. Look at that. Oh, isn't that cute? Just stretching out that one there with the stripe on its back. That's Esther's favorite. And apparently, oh, that one's got some stuff stuck on its foot. I think I may have to rescue it. Oh, let me, let me get it off. It's probably got poop on it and then... Yeah, it doesn't like it. It doesn't like it. Yeah, okay. I think I'm going to rescue it for a minute and take its stuff off the foot. Okay within a second. Okay, I'm back again. <laughs> After saving the chick with poopy stuff on its legs or bottom of its foot and carrying around a whole bunch of stuff. 
So, right now, I am going to do some kale. Now, we do have a lot of kale. Um, a lot of times, because kale lasts a lot of times all through the winter. And then when I took it out of the garden, to when we wanted to cover the garden for the winter with our black plastic, um, I thought I could get at the kale on the outside, but it didn't work as well as I would have liked. Um, anyways, because it can freeze. So anyways, I picked it, the kale and I just put it in plastic bags and threw it in the freezer. And that's what I do anyways. And then it was good for the for the chickens because I could I could just uh, pick off, break off some cabbage and they could have fresh greens throughout the winter too. So I don't mind growing a lot of kale. So I'm going to try this would be a lot of kale. But let's see what germinates here. I don't know which seed packet I've had the longest. So I'm going to use this one. I think that's the oldest package, so hopefully it does germinate for me. So I did about half of this. So I label it, I usually put the end of the label where the end of the seeds are, so I know what it is. And I put the date on that I put it on so I can see when it germinates. Now what do I want to put with the kale? Um, Cucumber, cucumber, oh, okay. zucchini, lovage, let's try the lovage. <coughs> Now, lovage is um, kind of an, it's an herb, but it's also a perennial, um, and it kind of like celery anise. Um, I know in a lot of Dutch dishes, soups and everything, we put in lovage. Um, so I want to get more of these going in the garden. Um, and then spread them around. So let's see if I can. See how many of these germinate. Okay, so once I put the seed down, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get some dry mix. And I'm just going to lightly spread over top, give it a little bit of a coverage. And then when I'm all done, the seeds, when I'm all done uh, with the seeds here, I will give it just a gentle water. And uh, so let me mark. I should be able to tell them apart because I think they're going to be a totally a different, different looking plant. So. And in Dutch, we call it the machi plant. So they also make kind of a soy sauce called machi. Maybe that's a brand name, but it's it does what it, it's supposed to do too, like it gives flavoring and so on. Um, okay, so I'm going to put that there. 
I'm going to set my next one. I think I'm going to start um, so the cucumbers and zucchini I can put together. And then I'll put the, I think I've got the eggplant as well too. I think I'll put that in a smaller one. Why don't I do that? Eggplant didn't do too well this year. Up in the garden, so um, well it was in the it was in the hoop house, and I don't know they just didn't do as well um, for whatever reason. So now I think we're not going to crowd it as much, but well, let's. Let's give her a go, because I don't mind some eggplant, but it's always nice in your oven roasted vegetables and you can make dips with it. And so I'm getting the soil all nice and moist. in there. No, not at all. So let's Trying to spread them out as much as possible. a little bit bigger seed so you can put a little bit more cover on it. See when you're putting a cover on it too so they want to germinate in the dark so that's what you're kind of giving it a, a darkness for it to germinate in and then um, then they'll pop through and then you want to put them under the lights. I'm glad I can read my, read my own writing. <laughs> it, doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't seem so. Anyways. So I'll put that here. So I don't know if you've seen my, my uh, I'll show you at the end there what my whole system is. Um, okay, so now I'm going to do some tomatoes. of tomatoes. Got two. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry about that. Looks like you fell. Okay, let's just see what that's doing.
funny how the water, because there's a lot of, a lot of kind of peat moss, I think, in here, and it just soaks in the water, but it kind of repels it at first, too, so kind of got to knead it in there. at this time of the year to be digging in dirt although we've got a beautiful day out there today it's nice and sunny I think it's supposed to get to like 13 today it's in Celsius um, so that's quite nice okay guess so I was gonna do the So a lot of my seeds um, I get from um, Revival Seeds in Nova Scotia, I believe that they are, and they grow um, heirloom vegetables, herbs and flowers, and they're open pollinated, so that means you can um, Uh, you can, yeah, use the seeds again from the ones that you actually, um, like grow so you can save the seeds, which I've done before. Uh, oops. These are some cherry tomatoes. Okay, so I've got about two rows of theirs, but yeah, I don't need a lot of cherry tomatoes because to keep going. I did try to save some uh, by putting them in oil and keeping them in the fridge. Um, I don't know. I use them a little bit that way um, with pasta, then I can just put quickly put pasta, put them in pasta, but um, it takes up room in the fridge as well as, as um, um, it kind of, I don't know, they kind of expand it, I guess. And I had a big mess in the fridge at one point in time, so um, okay. so since I used the whole thing, I'll just use the, the seed packet for the labeling. Okay, so peppers, I'm going to germinate in a different way. Now here I have Paul Robeson tomatoes, which are a nice kind of medium large tomato. They're kind of dark red. They're just delicious tomatoes. They're great for um, roasting and these ones are kind of stuck together. Because when I put them on the mats or on the paper towels, sometimes they stick together. We get paper holding them together. I think these ones are probably 
from the year before. So I have no idea what the germination rate is going to be for these ones. But why don't I do a little experiment? And use these seeds, and then I'll use the newer ones that I had to this week, uh, this year. This one's like a lot smaller. Interesting. So then we kind of wonder if they were actually that kind. I shouldn't plant too many because <laughs> you know what when they germinate and if they all germinate then I have a hard time to throw them away so last year I grew a bunch for for my daughter-in-law and her mother and for neighbor okay so Okay, that, oh, almost forgot, gotta cover them up. some flowers. But now you've seen me do this a few times, and it's pretty much the same with all the seeds. But I'll show you what I do for the green peppers. So, well, oh, green peppers, red peppers, hot peppers. to mist this uh, paper towel. Okay. So these are green pepper seeds from last year.
actually have still some more on my thing. Anyways, I'm just going to put them onto the, I don't know if you can see this. paper towel that is wet. Oh, shoot. Green peppers for some reason, or any peppers, sort of have a hard time germinating. And I was successful last year in this way of doing it. So, just plant the germinated ones. I've never tried it with anything other than peppers. So you do that. I'm just going to make sure that they're wet enough. Okay, and now I put them in a Ziploc bag. I think what I'm going to be doing too is I've got to um, put a little heat in there. So I've got a, a um, heater that I'll probably be heating this area, which isn't too bad for the chicks to keep the, the area a little bit warmer too, but they seem to be doing okay with the heat that they've got. So. Next week I probably will change it up because they're going to get bigger and they don't need as much heat. And I don't want them to be jumping out all over the place. So if I don't give them that, that perch to be jumping on, then Anyways, that was the green pepper. Um, I'm going to, um, I'll come back again when I'm doing the watering and I've got all my trays ready to go. Won't bore you with all the rest of it. But um, yeah, let's see how this works. I will do a few more with red pepper and jalapeno peppers or a, a chili pepper it says. So. Um, and do the same sort of thing. So, bye for now. Okay, Trisha back here from East Marsh Acres and I've planted all my seeds uh, that I'm gonna start today. Now I'm just gonna give them a water. So just to give you a setup, I've got a plastic rack here and what I've done is I've covered it with black plastic around so it keeps out some of the light there but this will keep all the moisture in as well as keeping uh, and then the light can also help like later on uh, with the actual grow lights so the grow lights are attached onto the top there you can see they're kind of hooked up there 
and then they're all attached and so on. So, um, so as I said, the ranunculus there are germinating underneath the, the black cloth. I'm going to try not to, germ uh, to germinate these without it. I don't think I did that last time. If I find it's um, getting too... Um, it's losing a lot of moisture or whatever. So anyways, I just got this new thing and it's a waterer um, rather than the pump sprayer which is yeah it takes a lot out of you to be doing it so this is like a like yeah you you would spray um, fertilizer or pesticides or something like this I'm just gonna use it for water so it's got a fine spray on it so let's see how this works So I'm just lightly watering these seeds in. Do you remember I put some dry seed starter mix on the top just to cover up the seeds? So a light dusting if they were really small seeds or if they're really small I just had the perlite. And so that's just to water them in. Remember the dirt was already moist, or the seed starter mix was already moist. And I'm just going to water this, this stuff in here. And for the top layer, nice that this water has a very fine spray. Almost losing pressure, but that's okay. Almost done. So it's nice that bring it up to pressure will let me do one whole spring looks like okay perfect i like it so anyways that's my seed starting process um i think i'm still going to add maybe a heater to just heat up this space a little bit more for germination purposes so i'll probably put the heater down below on the bottom shelf so then the heat can stay within within the uh, within there oh I don't know I've got the paper on here now I don't know how much is going to come through so anyways I will figure that one out we'll uh, talk to you later thanks for joining me today to uh, plant some seeds bye for now